In this video, we're going to learn how to make a custom animated arrow graphic inside of Fusion from scratch. Here's a look at what we'll be making. Oh, look at that. Look at that nice boy. Just comes in all animated, just floops in there. Arrows are super handy for motion graphics. And there are a lot of little tips in here that are super useful for anything that you're doing in Fusion. My name's Casey and I help content creators make amazing things inside of Blackmagic Fusion. And if you're learning Fusion, make sure to check out our Fusion Survival Guide. It's available in the description below. It's a free video course. Oh baby, let's get into the arrow winch. So there are a couple elements to this. One is the actual arrow, which we have a fill and a stroke and a texture, as well as a little drop shadow. And the other thing is it animates in. So it kind of grows out of the left and kind of moves in like that. Very nice. Let's build it. First thing, let's go up to our media pool, right click in the empty space and say new fusion composition. This is a great way to start any kind of graphic and we'll call this arrow and hit create. I'll double click on this new fusion composition and that will bring it up in fusion. So all we have is this little lonely little media out. So let's start with our background. I'm gonna grab a background and just drag it in. And this is just going to be something nice to have behind our arrow. What I would probably normally do is just take the alpha down on a black background and just leave the background clear. And then we can throw this arrow over things in the edit page. But since we're kind of just working in Fusion, we'll just make a nice little background here. Something maybe like this, kind of this teal color. I like this color. Call this teal BG. You can just hit F2 to rename any node. And let's kind of spread these out a little bit. And let's draw our actual arrow here. I'm going to click on this upper right button so that I have two viewers. And let's grab another background node. Grab this and drag it down here. And I'm gonna hit F2 and rename this arrow color. With our background node selected, let's go ahead and make this some kind of red. And I'll take the output of this arrow color background and put it over the output of our teal background like this. And that will make a merge. It'll automatically connect our arrow color to the foreground and our teal background to the background. So now we have a red screen, great. But we don't want a red screen, we want a arrow. Now it's a matter of masking this background to be an arrow shape. We can do that a bunch of different ways. We can combine different masks. It's honestly pretty easy just to grab a polygon mask. That's this one right here. Drag this down and connect it to our arrow. Now select this and I'm just gonna start at the bottom like this and draw an arrow just this way. And I don't have to do a very good job because we can adjust this later, but something like that. <laughs> Great, perfect. World's greatest arrow. It's amazing how good you can think an arrow is gonna be before it gets filled in. Anyway, so we can adjust this though. One little trick when you're drawing masks is you can select a bunch of points on a mask and you can scale them together by holding S and clicking and dragging. That'll scale them on both axes. Or you can hold down X for just the X axis. Or you can hold down Y and click and drag for just the Y axis. If you hold Y and you drag this enough, eventually it's going to line up all of these points to each other. So those are all aligned on the Y axis. Isn't that great? We can do kind of a similar thing here. Y and then I'll just kind of pull this a little bit. Same thing here. We'll say X and just pull this a little bit. Okay. Same thing here, X and pull it. There we go. And now we can kind of just line this up, make sure it's in the center and do our best to make a nice looking arrow. Okay. There's our nice arrow. And you know, you can make an adjustment by holding control and selecting a couple of different points and you can move them up and down. You can hold down shift to lock it to one axis. So maybe I can take this up just a little bit, move this back and forth and kind of adjust how my arrow works, right? So I don't know, maybe something like that. And once I feel really good about what my arrow looks like, I can select all of this and I'm just gonna kind of put it in the center. Just grabbing this and putting it in the center of my screen. Anyway, you draw your arrow like that. And so we'll call this arrow mask. And now we're ready to get fancy. Let's talk about animating this. So there are a lot of different ways that you could reveal something with a mask and everything, but this arrow is actually really cool. It's really unique because you can use this arrow to mask itself and you get a pretty neat effect. So what we're gonna do is use a transform node. I'll just hit shift space bar and type T-R-A-N-S. That'll bring up transform and I'll hit add. And we can take this mask and just put this into the yellow input of the transform and take the output of the transform and put it into the blue mask input of our merge. And nothing will happen by default, but if we move this transform around, let's say I take the center of this and I move it up and down, see it kind of moves within itself. And we can get this to sort of reveal itself with itself. And then it kind of grows the edges like that. Oh, it's just great. What a great way to animate an arrow. So easy, okay? So to get this to animate on, all we have to do is set a couple keyframes. We'll make it a little bit longer than the example. So maybe 24 frames. At 24 frames, we want this to be right in the center. And here at zero, we'll push this up 
to where it's like off screen, completely not visible, right? So now this comes up shloop, like that. Very nice. But we don't want this to stop immediately. We want it to kind of slow down before it stops. So what we can do is go to our spline panel, which is in the upper right hand corner. If I click on this spline button and it turns white, we'll open up the spline panel down here. And this is how we can adjust the speed of our animation. So if we go down to transform one displacement, that'll show us the graph of the speed of this movement. If I select this last keyframe and hit F on the keyboard, that's going to flatten out those tangents. I can even grab this and move it out a little more. And you could think about this as like if you're driving up a hill, you want it to be a really, really nice, smooth top to this hill. If you have a smooth top, you're going to have a smooth animation. So now as we play this back, we have that animate in very nicely. Oh, look at that. Dude, we didn't even have to do anything. It looks super pro. So easy. All we did was draw an arrow and then move it on top of itself. So cool. Okay. So that's like the main part. The next part is just kind of getting fancy. So let's rename this Matt. And now let's say we want to add a little bit of detail inside and outside of our arrow. Why don't we add a stroke around this? There are a lot of ways to add a stroke to something, but if we also want the stroke behind this animated part, we're gonna kind of have to add a stroke after this animation. So what we can do is actually, let's just grab all of these. I'll just select all of this and hold shift. And I can take these out of my main comp here, my teal background. And now I have these kind of as a separate little part and I'll just grab a new background and I'll just make it clear. And so we'll just merge this over a clear background, kind of like what we were talking about earlier. I'll hit one on the keyboard. So now we have this animated arrow over the clear background, right? Then we can put this animated arrow kind of as a big group over our teal background and we'll have the same result that we did. But the reason why we're doing that is so that we can add things under it really easily. Namely, we're going to add a special little effect called alpha mat shrink grow, A-L-P-H-A. -A. That'll bring up our alpha mat shrink grow in our shift spacebar select tool dialog here. I'll hit add. If I take the output of this merge and bring it into our alpha mat shrink grow and the output of that, merge that over the teal background, nothing happens. But if I select the alpha mat shrink grow and I go over here to the inspector, what I can get this to do is kind of expand this arrow a little bit. All I have to do is go to morph operation grow and then push up the radius and see now we are kind of adding a stroke. Now this is sort of a hack way to do it. You're gonna get a nicer stroke if you do something like uncheck solid on our mask and punch up this border width because then you'll have a nice stroke here that's generated from the mask. And if you wanna learn more about this, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on it. But if we did that, we would only be masking this arrow and the mask wouldn't be animated. So without a lot of work, it would be hard to kind of make that work. So what we do is we just leave this arrow solid and we add this alpha mat shrink grow and it takes this image with this transparency channel and it just kind of duplicates the edges and kind of grows this out. And by default, it ends up black because there's nothing in that alpha channel. There's it, there's nothing really for it to fill in there, so it just defaults to black. But what we can do is use this as a mat for something like another background. And I'll just plug this into the mask input, take the background and merge it over our teal background. We'll name this stroke color. And then we can make this whatever color we want because we're just using this alpha mat shrink grow. We're just using the alpha channel from it, the transparency, which we can preview here if we go to alpha. We're just using this as a new mat for this green background. And then we're putting that behind our original arrow. Okay. So it ends up looking like a stroke, kind of tricksy. But the cool thing is that even as this animates, it updates that alpha channel and we get a stroke around the whole thing. Very cool. So I don't know, let's make that a white for now. Looks good. And there's our basic outline. Now let's make this a little fancier. I'll go up to media pool and I'm gonna grab a texture and just drag this into our node graph here. And I'll hit one on the keyboard so we can see what this texture is. This is just a dirty kind of grungy texture. And I'll take this and just merge it over everything. And let's go ahead and make a transform and scale this up so that it covers our arrow. Maybe we'll even move it over, something like that. And then we can take our arrow, like our original arrow mask, and we can mask this merge. So now we have this texture happening right over where our main color is. Then we can select the merge and go over to our apply mode and pick something like multiply. And what that will do is just add the darker pixels on top of this red. So now it's just kind of texturized that color, which leaves us with a really cool effect, this kind of grungy arrow. Oh no, as this animates, 
look, we still have the texture there. So how do we get the texture to show up? Well, all we have to do is just take the mask, not from this original arrow mask, but from the merge that has this animated arrow. We'll use that and that'll do the same thing. So as this animates on, it also animates on the texture. Very cool. And so there we have our animated arrow. And from there, we might even wanna do something like, again, just kind of take all this out of the main thing here. We'll take this clear background, plug this into the background of the merge. If we don't have something in the background of a merge, it's just not going to work, like it won't show up at all. And so we can take the output of this merge and put it over our teal background, hit two on the keyboard. Now we have the same effect, but we could do something like add a shadow like that, soften that out. We could do something like add a transform even before our shadow and move this around, change its size, whatever we wanna do, Shloop. and there we have our animated arrow. And what I did in the example was I just kind of keyframed this transform. So we could say, you know, center like here, and then we'll just move this over just a touch. So we have just a little bit of movement. And again, we'll go to the spline panel, select just this transform to hit F on the keyboard to flatten this out. And we have this nice little animated arrow. Very, very cool. Check this out. Shloop. Oh, just nice and classy, pretty easy to do. The basic version of the arrow, very, very simple. You pretty much just draw an arrow and then you use it to mask itself and you just animate the arrow kind of going down to reveal itself. So if you need a really basic arrow, you can stop there or you can do all of these fancy things to make it just kind of next level. You know what I'm saying? Fun times. Oh man, it's so much fun just digging into this motion graphics world Ugh, infusion. If you have any requests for how do I do this infusion, let me know in the comments and uh, maybe I'll make a video about it. Never know. For now, if you're a content creator wanting to learn how to use fusion, get get a little get, get your fusion chops up a little bit. I highly recommend checking out the fusion survival guide. It's available in the description below. It's a free video course going over my top tips for working in fusion. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed hanging out with you a lot. I, hey, stay on the sunny side of life. <laughs> Is that a song?